So let's say in Bitwig Studio, you have this device here um, or this preset, and it doesn't matter if it's actually a VST instrument, if it's a hardware instrument, um, or it's a Bitwig device here like this one. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, so how do you create a multi-sampler patch from this one here? And this is how it sounds, by the way. It's my uh, comp guitar preset. And um, yeah, I already made a video on this uh, on my other channel, but it's not really correct and it's also old. And I want to show you how this, uh, how this works. So let's start here by creating a clip. And you want to sample maybe not every velocity step and you want to maybe not sample each key, but you can do that if you want to. You can go into that detail if you want to, but it's a lot of samples and it involves a lot of steps. Um, but if you put in the time and work, you can recall this project every time and can reuse this project to sample all kinds of devices. So here I show you first how this works. Um, so we created a clip here. Inside this clip, we start to sample maybe at Z0. And you have to make sure that the reverb tail, if there's a reverb on there maybe, that the reverb tail is inside the boundaries of this clip because we right click later on this clip and just hit bounce and everything that's outside of these boundaries here are cut off. So make sure that the reverb tail is actually in it. If it's, um, if it's a long reverb tail, make the clip longer or maybe slow down here the project tempo. It's the same effect kind of. It also makes here the sustain a bit longer. Um, so yeah, make sure the sustain is also in there if you have a sustained sound. So you can maybe put in later on some um, loop points. Uh, but here for the guitar, I think it's just a percussive kind of a guitar sound. So I just keep it short. So you can see we can make the clip here a bit shorter, something like this. That's perfectly fine. So all we do, uh, all we do now is basically we, we, we uh, rename the clip here. We click on it and on the left side here in the arranger clip, we can give it a name. And I usually start with something like V for velocity and say, we want to stay with 25% uh, velocity. So we go up in 25% steps. So we have four velocity um, steps for each key. And then the key is Z0, and this one is read by the sampler itself, so it's very important. So the sampler then takes this number and um, puts it on the right root key for each sample you drag in. So after that, you can give it a name and maybe use this here, comp guitar. And it's not really important. You can maybe later on then go into the file system, use a mass rename tool and rename all the samples here. So you can also use maybe something like something generic like sample and replace it then later on with, with such a tool. But here I'm going for yeah, comp guitar. And then the rest is, it doesn't matter. It puts a slash bounce on it every time you bounce this clip. So this naming convention is more or less important to have all this in. And um, yeah, you go on to make another clip here. And in this one, we go for velocity 50 maybe. And uh, maybe we also have to take into account this 100% is maybe not, yeah. Maybe you go here for 0, 0.25 and 0, 0.5. Because later on, we need to use this here to sort the files by name. And then you can more or less figure out which samples come, uh, go to velocity of layer one, velocity layer two, and so on. Um, okay, so next one would be here, uh, 75. And this one is 100. And yeah, what you can do also is here, um, use shift and tap. So you have the, the detail editor in here and you can still see the, the instrument down here. And you can also switch instead of showing the clip here, which is 
basically just this highlighted clip here you can switch here to the track view so you can see all clips and all nodes in all clips right so you can easily rename this here and you can also have control over each of these uh, nodes in each clip so we can go here to um, this is 25 percent velocity this is 50 percent velocity this is 75 and this is 100. so let's test this here quick Okay, nice. So now we can move on to the next key and say this is the same. Right, so now we can decide if we want to sample each key, which would be also very time intensive. Um, and you can do that because you only have to do this once. This is just a setup basically to show you how you can set up such a project and how this works. But once you've done this, then you can recall the project, exchange here the, the device or the instrument and just resample and you have a new multi-sampler patch. So let's go here for um, something in between. This is F, um, F0, so we have to rename here everything. Velocity steps are the same. We even cloned here all the velocity steps. So we only need to rename basically here the clips. So this is F. This is F. Would be nice to actually select all this and just replace it, but it's not possible. F, F, and so on. So, and then you do the same for the next keys until you reach basically the end. Let's go for uh, C1 here. C1. And like I said, um, if you put in the time, it's worth it because you can recall it every time. You don't need to do this every time. It's just one, one time setup. It's very important to remember. And maybe I skip ahead here. Okay, so I redid everything here from Z0 to what do we have here um c f5 okay um and the uh, only work or the hard work was basically to rename all this here um i even then just selected here a bunch of um bunch of uh, clips here just you know duplicated everything selected the keys <laughs> pitched it up and then just renamed it. So it was not really a hard task to do. Um, it's just a bit tedious and um, you have to do it once, just like I said it multiple times in the video for some reason. Um, so now that we have this here, we can also recheck uh, maybe some of the entries here. You can see this is pretty short. So this sample is actually way too long, right? So we can make some adjustments to the length of your samples to make the sample space a bit smaller if you want to. So the easiest way to do this is here just to increase the playback speed. Right, but you have, uh, also have to make sure that the lowest sample, which is usually a bit longer then. Yeah, it's still okay. Um, I guess we can even make this a bit faster here. So this, this is basically all about um, making sample size small. So now that we have this, we can switch back here with shift and tab to this view. We named everything and all we have to do now is to save this as a project and then uh, come back to it when we want to do something or when, to, when we want to resample a device. So right click here on all these samples. We have to, of course, select every sample or every clip here right click on it choose bounce and then post fader if you want to have all the fx in it and i usually go for 32 bit but you can also choose 16 bit and dithering if you want to if you want to keep it small uh, but i go here for 32 bit um, it's 
it's probably also way too too much for a sample library. Maybe go for the here in 16-bit, that's fine. And then just hit OK. And you can see now it bounces every clip here to a sample or a file actually. And it's all collected in the project uh, directory, as you can see here with the right names in it. And all we have to do now is to create a new sampler. And hit here, create new multi-sample patch. And now we select all these samples here. Shift and um, Alt Shift and click. Drag these in. And when you switch here to the um, mapping, you can see that we have here all the samples. This is F0. F0 is the root node exactly on F. Um, also C1 is perfectly aligned here with C. So we have the right root key for each of these samples. And you can see even the ranges are correct. So they map out here the space from, so we sampled F0 and everything is covered from below, what's this here, E, uh, E0 up to, um, yeah, B, or A, I don't know exactly. Um, so everything in between is covered basically key-wise. The only thing that we have to do now is to separate the velocity steps. You can see here all velocity samples are played at once um, because the Bitwig sampler doesn't recognize anything here in the file name. So we have to do it manually, but there are some tricks to it. So the first trick is actually to sort the samples now uh, for name. And this gives you basically everything that has a low number first. So we have now every 25% um, velocity sample here in a row, one after the other, right? And then we have the 50, and then we have the 75, and 100, and so on. So we have to sort it by this. And what I do usually is to just select the first one of these uh, bunches here, so the first 25, then uh, hold Control and select the second one, which is 50. Hold Control and uh, select here the first 75. Hold Control, select the first 100. So now we have here selected all the first velocity samples. And now we can right click on it and can say distribute velocity equally. And it tries to map here the lowest to from 0 to 32 and, you know, up to 100, uh, 127, which is the highest, highest velocity range. So now that we have this, we can select the other ones, um, these ones here, and just snap it to the exact same size. And also these ones here. So it's maybe a bit harder to do when you have a lot of velocity steps, but when you have for each sample a different velocity step, then it becomes pretty tedious, I would say. And I hope Bitwig includes maybe some kind of uh, recognition for this for the for the file names, so we can put in here actually a velocity name, and Bitwig uses that. Would be nice. So now that we have this, we pretty much done. That's it. Um, we can save this preset now here, or even use the yeah multi sampler editor here and save it as a new multi sample patch. And maybe can also reuse this inside the grid inside uh, with the sampler. So, um, and then we can play it. Maybe a longer release time. Sadly, inside the Bitwig sampler, there's nothing really like um, round robin, if I'm not wrong. Maybe you can fake it in a way, but I haven't found really a way to do this. Maybe you can use uh, some grouping uh, actions or maybe use the select and randomize the select here um, to select different layers. But it makes everything more complex. So you have to take multiple um, velocity samples from the same velocity setting from the same key you know it just multiplies everything by how many steps you want to make um, in my opinion it's perfectly fine to just sample 
um, three or four keys from an octave and just take the octaves that make sense for this instrument. So for the um, guitar here, for example, you don't need to sample C0. Uh, C0. That's way too low. Nobody probably plays down here with the, with the guitar. I don't know. So you have to choose ranges that make sense to keep everything small and controllable. You don't need to sample everything in high detail. Um, so yeah, like I said multiple times, save this as a preset, make it as detailed, de detailed as you want, save it for later use and then um, create multi-sampler patches for it, uh, from it. It's actually not that hard to do.